Hello, welcome to Jamie TV. I trust that you're all very well and groovy. Today I'm going to be making my second new rack video. So in case you missed the first episode, link here because you may want to check that one out first. I'm going to be using the clip launcher. I'm going to use it as a bit of a drum module, but you could use it as a whole host of different things. So I'll explain how all that works. And I'm also going to be customizing the rack and going into that in detail. I'm going in deep because in the first episode I did cover that a little bit but it seems to be the aspect of new rack that people are having the most trouble with so i'm going to cover that and i'm going to make the module available from my patreon account where there's a bunch of other new rack modules are made available and there's um presets for different ios apps there's projects for aum and cubasis a bunch of things that i, I kind of make available to support these videos really so link to patreon here I'm also going to be putting the module into a project and making a noise with it. I've no idea what kind of track yet because I never know until I just start making a noise. Okay, so no further pissy panting about, let's get stuck in. Okay, so here we are in Aum. This is the beginnings of my project. And what I have here so far is just my microphone so I can speak to you. And I already have DigiKeys open because when I've finished building my drum module, I'm going to need an app that can send some MIDI to that drum module. We go here and we add new rack as an effect. I'm just going to pop down to the four pocket section here. Now some people are a little confused. When you go to open new rack, you can find it as new rack effects or new rack effects MIDI. And I'm just going to show you what the difference is there. If I open new rack effects, you'll see that there's no burger icon here. So I can't send MIDI information from another app into this version of new rack. So what we need to do is open the other version of new rack, the one that deals in MIDI information. And now with my burger icon here, I can go in here and I can say that I want new rack to receive MIDI information from DigiKeys. And if I just do this, switch off all the channels except MIDI channel one because that's the channel that DigiKeys is going to be sending drum information out on. Okay now we'll go into new rack and what you see here is an empty template if you like. So if I click on edit down here I can now add a component to my rack. So I click on the plus and from generators I'm going to add clip launcher and then on plus here I'm going to add a graphic EQ. I also want to add a reverb so in time based reverb and I think I'm going to add some nice VU meters from visual. We'll go with the vintage meters because I just really like the look of them. Okay, so those are the elements. I'm just gonna zoom out a little here so you can see them. So those are the elements that I want in my module. Before we get stuck into the customization of this rack, I'm gonna show you how the clip launcher works. So I'm gonna come out of edit mode and this mode here is called the connection mode. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to switch off the EQ and the reverb. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll zoom in nice and close to the clip launcher. Now, as you can see, we have nine pads available to us that I can assign sounds to. I'm just going to click on pad one and drag up. And there you'll see I can name the pad, I can assign a sample to it, or I can clear a sample. So if I go to assign sample, you'll see that now we enter a sample pool. Now there are already some samples in here that we can use if we wish, and they sound pretty nice, but I want to use some samples of my own. So what I do is I go to import, and then it takes me to my filing system where I can drag in the sample. My preferred method to do this though is a way that Paul the developer pointed out to me last time I made a video about multi-track where we go down to file at the bottom 
if my mouse will let me. What's going on, mouse? Thank you. Right, and we drag that over here. Or at least we try. There we go. And we go to my sample library and into drums. And where is that kit I really like? Okay, I'm going to use this kit today. Okay, so I want kick one, and all I have to do is drag it onto this pad. There we go. And there's my drum sample. All right, now if I press and hold on here again, not press and hold, press and drag over. I can rename that pad. Okay now, so the rest of this process is a little bit obvious, so I'm not gonna bore you with it. I'm gonna drag some more samples into the other eight pads, and I shall be back in a moment. So you'll see now that what I've done is I've dropped my nine samples onto my nine pads, and I've relabeled each pad, not only with the appropriate component part name of the drum kit, but also I've added the MIDI note name that will trigger that particular pad, just because if I don't use this for a while and I come back and use it at a later date, I'll see straight away which MIDI notes to use for those pads. Now we have here a master output level for the module, but we also have a level for each individual pad. So what I can do is, like, let's say for instance, my crash. That's pretty loud. So I'm gonna drop the level of the crash a little and then I'm going to pan my ride over here. Splash I'm gonna take over here a little. And my hi-hat I'm gonna take to this side. And then my snare, I'd like to be over here. I'll put the stick, side stick, and roll to the same place. Okay, so you'll see that what happens is Clip Launcher saves all of those settings for each individual pad. Now I'm probably going to play around with this a little more now, but once I've finished messing with that, then I'm going to save this preset. So what we do to do that is we double click on the side of the module and save preset, and then we can name it. And I'm going to call this preset the Drumulator. I want a capital. Another useful little tool in Clip Launcher is the looped button. What I can do is select a pad, set it to be looped, and then set it going. Now that looped button only applies to that one pad. So you can imagine in a live jam kind of a scenario that could be pretty useful. I could add in other drums over the top. That is, if I could in fact play drums in time. Something I should have shown you when I double clicked on the left hand side of the module to save the preset is that in here you can also load a preset, delete a preset and remove module. Now I've found that particularly useful because the other way to remove a module is a double finger swipe up. And I don't know if it's just me being useless, a stupid old hippie, but I just find that a little awkward to do. I'm sure that watching this, your mind's racing away and you're thinking, Clip Launcher doesn't just have to be for drums, you could use it to launch any number of sounds or samples or loops. You know, the possibilities, especially for live jamming, are incredible. This module is a fantastic addition to New Rack. In fact, for me personally, I'd, I'd pay 20 quid for this one module alone. One of the things that I'd really like to point out about New Rack is that a lot of the fuss that's been made about it has been about the possibilities of the customization. And that's one of the things that I absolutely love about it, but it's completely unnecessary really. If at this point I wanted to go ahead and use these modules, then I could do. These are perfectly ready to be. In fact, let's just press play because I, I do have some drums already programmed into, uh, into DigiKeys. So you see there, I've got my, got my drums playing back. I could add in my EQ. 
Bring in my reverb. Not enough reverb. And you can see my VU meters working away there. So, you know, if you're not into the kind of the you know the making it look really cool and putting pictures of your kids or your girlfriend or your dog or your favorite sci-fi character in the background you don't have to but i like to so i'm going to show you how to do that now good practice when you're customizing in Nurac is to keep saving and then if you cock up you can always go back to a previously saved state and pick it up again we just go up here press save and I'm just going to call this one Drumulator and save. Okay, now let's get stuck into making this module look really cool. So we come out of the connection mode by clicking here, go into builder mode and click on edit. Now I've done this a few times now. What I found to be really advantageous is to zoom right out and then make the playing field as big as you possibly can make it. Then what we'll do, we'll click on each of these individual modules and spread them out. I want to make some room here. Now you'll see that as I click on these modules, a little box pops up with the possible edits I can make to those modules. We'll come back to that in a bit. Now I'm going to click on the clip launcher here, make this box really big because what I want to do is I want to make these pads as big as they possibly can be because I'm thinking for a live jam environment big pads would be really useful. So I'm going to click on these little controls here and move them all out of the way as one and then I want to make these pads as big as I can so I'm going to spread them all out Now, if I click on the bottom right hand side of each pad, I can make them all the biggest that they possibly can be. Now that I've supersized all the pads, I want to get them nice and evenly spaced out in the top left hand corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use snap to grid and that is set to 10 pixels, which means that I should be able to get a nice even spacing when I start dragging them close to each other. So I'm going to do it roughly zoomed out and then I'm going to zoom in, oops, and then I'm going to zoom in and do it a little bit more precisely. Right, let's pinch on the screen here and get up nice and close. Okay, now, snap to grid, 10 pixels is not working for me there. Let's try five. That's better. All right, they look nice and even. So let's zoom out and see what we're gonna do with the rest of it. All right, now I'm gonna move these controls over here again. And then I'm just going to drag this border up here. Now I don't really want a border or a title on this module. So I'm just going to drag this up here into the corner. And then I'm going to remove title and border. Now I think I want my graphic up here. So I'm going to move these controls again. Select them all, drag them down. Okay, now you see how those controls are starting to disappear there? It's because they're going outside of the module's border, which is now invisible. So I'm just going to take off clip to bounds so that I can put them wherever I want. Right now, let's grab the, deselect them, grab the EQ. I'm going to pull that up here. Now, I'm thinking to make this look nice and neat, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take off clip to bounds, grab these 
two controls here. Let's, oops, no, I didn't want to do that. Let's press undo. There we go. Right, try that again. Select these two controls, move them off of the graphic, and then let's lose the title and the border in a minute. <laughs> yeah, let's move it all up. I'm going to zoom in. There, I think that looks nice and even up there. Okay, now these controls that we moved off the graphic, let's put them at the side. Now I'm going to remove the title and the border from the graphic. Now I'm really liking how these faders look on this module and I think it would be nice if if these knobs were also faders if they matched. So let's select these three knobs and in options we'll go replace with faders. Okay, now we can go to here and we'll go output over here pad level pan level and then I'll just zoom in nice and close and even those up Now the looped button, let's bring that up here. For now, I'm gonna put that there. Right now, what have I got left? Okay, let's drag the reverb over, select on the knobs, replace with faders, and get rid of clip to bounds. Don't need a title or a border. Mm, power button, right. Power button will go over here. And now we can bring my VU meters across. I'm going to lose the title, lose the border, zoom in. Now let's make these nice and big and fill out this space here. Okay, maybe put the switch about here. Okay, that looks something like. Okay, now I feel that I've got things kind of pretty much where I want them and looking sort of how I want them to look. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce the size of the playing field. There we go. Zoom in. This would be a good time to do a save. Oh, yes. To save, I just need to come out of edit. There we are. Okay, now I really want to add a cool Batman background and I'm going to do that now because then that should give me a good idea of what I need to do with the colours of the controls. So I go up to my menu here and no I don't. What I do is I need to be in edit and I need to come out of new rack for a moment, go to my photos, my mouse has gone all drunk and go to my Batman background and go to copy photo. Okay. back to new rack, to my menu, paste background. Okay, there's my cool Batman background. Now it looks pretty cool as it is, but I can do more. If I go to here, I can choose a fader style. Let's see what looks good. There's my gray, I'm not so keen on that. It's not showing up too well. Gold. Hmm. 
That shows up pretty nice. Grey lit up. Okay, they're nice and chunky looking. Or black. Or white. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll go with the lit up ones. Now I just want these pads to show up a little better. So let's click on a pad and see what we can do with the outline color. Um, how do I get white? Maybe drag everything down. No, that one up. Okay, white. Let's copy that because if this works, hang on. Right, yeah, see there's my white border. That looks good, makes the pad stand out. So. Let's copy that, or rather paste that to the other pads. Can I paste them all at once? I don't know. Let's try. I can. All right, that's pretty cool. That saves a bit of time. Okay, let's click on all the faders in the EQ. Let's paste the white into there. There, see that shows up nice. And then We'll do all the reverb controls and the drumulator controls. Okay, now I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I'm just going to drag this bottom bit up. We've just got a little excess space down there at the bottom that we don't need. Another option I'll show you while I'm here. Um, these pads, I could make them see-through. If I go to window style, transparent and now you can see my Batman background through the pads I think I like that I may have to ponder on whether I want the pads to be transparent or opaque but other than that I'm pretty happy with it so let's just come out of edit and uh, let's go into presentation mode with a double click and I'm pretty happy with how that looks Okay, so there you have it. The Drumulator is all finished and I'm really pleased with it. And I will upload it to the Dropbox folder that's available through my Patreon account before I get my dinner. Now, I've changed my mind about how I'm going to end this video. I'm going to leave it there. I was going to end this video with me starting to make a new track using the Drumulator. But it's already quite a long video. So I'm going to save that over for the beginning of the next video, I think. I think that's the best way to do things. Now, if I've missed anything, and I realise, by the way, that this is not the most exciting video ever. There's not a lot of music in it, but I wanted to make this video available as a resource on YouTube for anyone who's just struggling with the customization process in NURAC. So I hope that's, I hope it's helpful to someone anyway. Now, if I've missed anything and you have any questions all about NURAC or anything else to do with iOS music or music in general, then please do feel free to comment or to contact me directly. My email address is down below the video for a reason. All my social media links are down there. You can contact me on any platform you like. Feel free. I'm here to help. This is what I do now. So. If I can be of any help at all to anyone, then just let me know, get in touch. So till the next video, take care of yourselves, be good, behave, make some music, and don't pissy pants about. See you later.